Peter Larson. Let me tell you a little something about Peter Larson. The ultimate networker. Pretty amazing guy, I will tell you that. I've learned a lot from Peter. His skills are so unique. A lot of people follow him because he is such a caring, compassionate person who gives so much in the community. And I'm so lucky and so privileged to be friends with Peter Larson. Not just professionally, but personally as well. Our special guest today is Mr. Peter Larson, <coughs> cop technologist. Peter, we're excited that you're here. He's got some great information on networking. If anybody in this room has anything to do with sales or growing a business, networking is a way to accomplish it. Um, I'm pretty, pretty heavy into networking. I'm pretty passionate about it. This gentleman right here is probably one of the one of the best in Richmond when it comes to networking. So it's my pleasure to introduce to you, Peter Larson. Thank you. Thank you. That's great. Well, that is very, very. Thank you very much. Today, we're going to have some fun. This is an audience participation event, which means that I'm going to be asking you some questions throughout the time. So get your thinking cap on. Don't lean back too, back in, too far back in that chair, because I'm going to be drawing on you and helping you to know where to go and what to say at networking events, how to be prepared and not be scared. So, so just a little bit about me. Um, what, what I do in one sentence is I solve business problems through office technology, equipment, and software. I've been 16 years in the same industry and all in, in Richmond, <laughs> six years with Cobb Technologies. LinkedIn is very important for networking. Um, 1,080, that's actually 1,093 now. It just was a few days ago. Um, and 42 written letters of recommendation. So I could talk another class I teach on uh, LinkedIn also. But that is another part of it there. And three to six networking events every week for the last six years. How do I have time for family? I do. I've been married 31 years to the same woman. <laughs> we have two grown, married, working sons, local, and um, just a great marriage. So now, where do you go for business in Richmond? I'm going to give you some ideas, and you're going to give me some ideas, too. First of all, define what your goal of networking is. Okay, what are your networking goals? And see that little sign? Look on the bottom. Ask the audience for help. I need help, audience. I don't know how to do this stuff. So I'm going to ask you, and just you don't have to stand up or anything. Just tell me some ideas from your ideas. What are some of your networking goals? Anybody? I have to call on Carmen Kenny Smith first. <laughs> Carmen, look at you around the back row. Tell us, just tell us one of your networking goals. Networking goals for me is to build relationships with everyone that I come in contact with. Everyone, whether you like me or not. <laughs> Good answer. Who else? Rob Youngblood. Find resources for people that are already in my existing network. Uh, find resources. Who else? Ron Johnson. Meet two or three new people. Excellent. Who else? Yes. Say on positive word of mouth, just you know, throughout the community, be able to develop that. That's important. Anything else? Anyone else? Yes, sir. Making connections between various networks. Ah, yes, we're going to talk about that, too, because there's so much to choose from. Those are all excellent. One of the ideas is industry-specific groups. OK, you may be in the AEC industry. Well. Try, and I'll give you some ideas. Who's heard of, sorry, I spelled it wrong, Graker? <laughs> Graker, thank you. Yeah, my friend David Williams is here. He would know all about that group. Uh, uh, crew, Associated General Contractors, anyone part of any of those groups? Put a hand up if you're a part of Crew or Associated General Contractors. Okay, one young lady here. Those are good. If you're in healthcare, Partners in Healthcare. Who's heard of Partners in Healthcare? One, two, a few, good. That's one that's kind of under the radar, but I tell you, if you want to get into healthcare, they meet once a month. It's a free event, and it's 60 to 70 people. If you're interested in healthcare, that's the place to go. Talk to me afterwards. I'll tell you about how to get in that group. Geographically specific groups. Well, now you say, well, I have lots of, but I'm interested in the 
Hanover Air Park. Like this young lady here did such a great job describing. I know exactly where your gym is because it's a stoplight and a turn right and then the colors. That's great for geographic. So maybe you want to focus on geographic locations. That's very powerful because if you're known as the source in the Hanover Industrial Air Park, business will flow to you. If you're known as the source in Chesterfield County, business flow. Hanover County. So sometimes it's very powerful there. Stories of overcommitting. Has anyone ever overcommitted to networking groups? Well, I know I have. Rob Youngblood knows a lot about that too. So this is one of my Peter Larson secrets. How not to overcommit. Well, I've done it a lot of times. When you do so many events every week, you have to balance your schedule. And um, I have overcommitted, said that I'd be at one place, and said that I'd be at another place at the same time. And I haven't figured out how to be in two places at one time yet. So the iPhone actually has really helped me to balance my schedule and lots of reminders from Siri and my wife to, to, uh, make, to, to make sure I don't overcommit. Now, what to do at a business networking event? Ah, here we go. So now you've gotten the wisdom on geographic or industry specific. What do you do once you get there? Well, these are some ideas. First of all, very important, prepare before you get there. Who's the leader of the group? Oh, there's an asterisk, one of my secrets. This is one of my secrets. When you go to a group, find out who the leader is of that group and meet that person. Try to get there a little bit early if you can. I do this all the time. To get there a little early, introduce yourself to the leader of the group so the leader knows who you are. If you get the connection with the leader, the leader will introduce you to this person, the leader will introduce you to this person. It's just magic. So that is one of the secrets why I, when I go to, um, like this, this group here, um, you know, Bob is the leader. I had met Bob early, Bob introduced me, and Bob has introduced me to other people in this meeting. It's good to meet the leader first. Who else is there? Potential business contacts. How do you know? So I'm going to ask the audience, how do you find out information about who's going to be at a meeting before you get there? Give me some ideas. LinkedIn. Ooh, LinkedIn is good. How does LinkedIn, uh, how would LinkedIn tell you if someone's going to be at an event? Well, normally, I mean, a lot of events will show you the registrars that are the person who registered online for events. That's good. That. Excellent. LinkedIn. What else? I heard a website. Check. <laughs> talk. The talk about that. website, like you said, normally has the logo who else is attending, and you just click it, and it's got a whole list, and sometimes even have their business and their position. That's a good one. What else? How else do you find out in advance who's going to be there? Rob? You may reach out to the leader of the organization and inquire as to who will be there. That's a great one. That's what I did because I don't know all of you all yet. I've never been here before. But I reached out to the leader. Bob was very helpful. Diane was very helpful. So I knew who was going to be coming. What about Facebook? Facebook actually is a good way because you can create an event. Who's created an event in Facebook? Anyone? OK, good. You create an event, which I created an event for this day. And then I knew how many people were coming. And I knew that some of you were going to be here because you already said you're going to be there. So that's a really good way to know in advance. Do get there early. Ah, yes. It's challenging, but it's rewarding. Right over here. I'm going to, I'm going to move the camera. Come on, camera. Right here. This is the name badge table. This is where I go when I get there early. I talk to the person in charge. Nice to meet you. Pleasure. And then I stand over here, and I look, and I have my device, my, and I'm looking at LinkedIn, and preparing my mind. Ooh, boy, where'd it go? Oh, there we are. Preparing my mind for, it's all right. That's pr it's probably me, for who I'm going to meet. That way I know to look for Susan Frank of Ashura. That is a big tip, and that has gotten miles on it. Um, study the dynamics of the, the, the group. Who has stood back like this and observed a group? It's important to observe. Yes, that the gentleman in the corner, yes, I'm sure you observe. Being, <laughs> being, being in law enforcement, he is observing us at this very moment. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> it's good to stand back and look for what I call the circles of power. 
the circles of power. You'll see them. Now, they're not really cliques. They're circles of power. You'll find one individual and people surrounding that individual. That is the power person. Sometimes it takes a while to get to that person. You can't just come in and I'll tell you secrets of how to get to the power person, maybe today. Um, but that is, that's what I do. I observe a group. Before I go diving into the pool, I want to put my toe in the water. I want to see where the power people are and then go, then go from there. Do let everything that happened to you that day go. So I tell Carmen in the back often, just anything that's happening in your day, family issues, your kids, your job, your sales numbers, whatever it is, find a way to let it go before you get there in the morning, before you get there here at noon, or before you get there in the evening. Just find a place, and Ron Johnson is my energy coach, and he's teaching me these things, to let these things go so that when you come in the meeting, you're fresh and you're ready to give and receive. What to say? Now you're there. Now you've done all these things. What do you say? Gosh, what is there? Well, find one person you know and talk to them first. Very important. When you first get there, you've got, maybe you don't know anybody when you come up to an event. It's okay. You've got to know somebody or just introduce yourself. Find a way. The smooth introducer. That person becomes your smooth introducer. Like Tom Bandy, who I know, if I didn't know anybody else in this room, I know Tom and Tom would introduce me. And I know him, he would. Find somebody and then they become the smooth introducer. Worst opening lines, we're gonna talk about opening lines. It's like speed dating. No, it's not, don't put that on film. <laughs> Worst one that I just don't really like very much. How's it going? <laughs> what do you mean, how's this going? Are you talking about my family, my health, with my trainer? Are you talking about finance? It's too broad. We don't know how to answer that question. Don't just ask, how's it going? There are better opening lines, which I'm going to ask the audience. Get ready. Have a clear and concise 10-second elevator speech about what you do. So now I am going to ask the audience. I want to hear some of your elevator speeches for 10 seconds. Who would like to be first? Ron Johnson, I see your hand up. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Ron Johnson. I help companies increase their performance, their profits, and their sales through a process called energy leadership. This process enables an individuals to understand who they're being and how that's either helping them or hindering them from their success. Ron Johnson with Possible Now. Not bad. Put your hands together for Ron. Put your hands together. That was, that was good. Just a tad bit over 10 seconds, but that was good. Who else? 10 second elevator speech. Yes, Bob. I'll take your real quick. Yes, I see your hand. I'm working with all state benefits, and I simply help businesses expand their current benefits package without it costing the business owner any additional money. Very good, very good. Put your hands together for Bob. Very good, very good. Who else? I see your hand, Martha. <laughs> I'm Martha Moore with Experity Payroll Services. We're a full-service local payroll company with over 20 years of experience, and we help small businesses, because we're small businesses. Very good, very good. Thank you, Martha. Yes, Paige, I'm my sure friend. This, 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 is, this is my new friend, Sorry, Paige. My I'm Paige McDowell. I am with Surf Pro Panover. We are a local fire and water damage restoration company, and I am your superhero. I help put your life back together and make it like it never even happened. Boom. I like it. I like it. These are good. Who else? We have time. Yes, Rob, Rob Youngblood. Good afternoon. My name is Rob Youngblood. I serve as the local manager for Inroads, which is the largest and oldest nonprofit organization that caters to multicultural students to develop them to become corporate and community leaders. Mm, very good. Very good. I like that, Rob Youngblood. Somebody else. We got a few had time for a few more. Who else was I'd like to give a 10-second elevator speech. Anyone else? Ah, yes, young lady. Hi, I'm Anna Andrade. I'm the owner of the Primrose School of Atley Commons, and we provide the best and most trusted early childhood education for infants up through after school care. Very good. Like it. Like it. Like it. Anyone else? Anyone else? We have time. We're in no hurry. Nah. All right. 
That's important, and those are great examples. Have your 10 seconds. Because, you know, a lot of people don't have a long attention span. I don't know about you, but mine isn't. <laughs> my attention span is not that long. And w usually people give you about 7 to 10 seconds to say what you do at a networking event. Best opening line. This is the one that I love it when somebody asks, and I ask this one a lot. What's new in your business this year? What's new in your business this year? If I asked Tom Bandy, what's new in short term, what's new in your business this year? What would you say? Oh, we got some dashboards that C-Stores seem to be loving. Help right. Drive their business. Great. So I'm thinking about dashboards and C-Stores, which are convenience stores. Uh, let's see. We'll move around a little bit. Uh, this Scott Courtney. <laughs> What's new at Resource International this year? Uh, spec buildings in, re um, in commercial real estate. Very good. Thank you. I did not, did not know that. Let's see. Who else is looking? David Williams. What's new, What's new at Collier's uh, this, we're also this year? We're in commercial real estate business, and I would say uh, there's more interest in building buildings than it has been in quite some time. So building. Yeah. Building new, building new, new, new property uh, versus just acquiring existing properties. Excellent. Thank you. Chester, I see your hand, your hand up back there. Chester, what is... I've been part of me. Managed what? services. Yes. For IT. That's excellent. In our business, and then I have to explain. All right, but that's that's an open line. Excellent. Those are all very good. Carmen, what is what is new in your business at MetLife this year? Oh my gosh, you just put me right on the spot. <laughs> it's a networking event. There's a lot going on at MetLife. Um, a lot of positive things. Let's just say that. As excellent. Far as my role, I'm not an advisor. I'm a PR director. Yeah. So working with top advisors on securities and investments and teaching and training. Yeah. Now you, now you all saw how that worked. Isn't it great? Because if you say, what's new in your business this year? We all want to talk about our business, right, Stuart? We want to talk about our business. And you want somebody to ask you. You don't want to really volunteer, hey, did you hear that we're doing this? And th Ask that question. It's a great opening line. Now let's ask you, what are some other good opening lines you've heard or said at networking events? Ask the audience. Who'd like to be first? Great opening line somebody has said to you or you've heard at an, at an event. Rob? Where are you from originally? Ah, oh, nice. how about that one? That's that, big. That, that gets that's you talking really a lot. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's a good one. Where are you from originally? Who else? Huh? Sometimes I just attend these meetings often. Do you attend these meetings often? Often that is a good one. That's a good one. Yes. How did you get into this line of business? How did you get into this line of business? Wow. That really opens a lot of things. Well, it all started, and that starts a conversation. Who else? Yes, Ron. What does your ideal customer look like? Ooh, what does your ideal customer look like? That opens up a whole bunch of wonderful things. Let's see, anyone else? Yes? What do you like best about what you do? Ooh, that's a good one. Yes, Stuart? This is a small town. I yeah. found out over yeah, it the is. years. Now, I like to find out maybe somebody we know in common. If I know you work for a certain company. I say, oh, oh, yeah. Oh, you know? Yeah, do you know this person yeah, at? So yep. so, yeah. Instant, Blessed. beautiful, beautiful. Instant connection. That's, that's perfect. Anyone else? We have plenty of time. Any, anyone else? Good opening lines. All right. Okay. Now. What are some poor opening lines you've heard? The ones that when the guy or gal says it, you say, oh, I don't know how to answer that. Give me some poor ones to help educate us all. I see your hand up there, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> well, in the case of someone that may be networking for a job, uh, the worst thing to ask somebody is, are you guys hiring? Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> yeah, wow. Are you guys, right off the bat, are you guys hiring? Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Puts, that's, that's good. That's good. What's that, Tom? I, I can almost hear you. Go ahead. I, the negative Nancy is always uh, a chair challenge for me. If someone complains oh, about yeah. the food or the line or right. something, I, I'm not, not sure what, where to go with that one. That's, that's a tough one. Who else? How are you? Oh, thank you, Nancy. How are you? <laughs> that just, yeah. well, how do you answer that question? Excellent. Yes? I, I think any, any question, that, that a yes or no answer, because yeah. what happens is you get that awkward pause, pause afterward, <laughs> you know, that, that you, you pretty much 
you shot all your ammunition off, and you're, you know, there's nothing, there's nothing to fade into, into additional conversations. Exactly, exactly. What else? Anyone other? Yes, Carmen. Um, something that I've learned throughout the years, just in sales, is never introduce yourself with your title. Hmm. Never interesting. Never introduce yourself with your title. Come up with something really creative in that 10 seconds, describing yourself um, and what you do. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. That's. The, you know, I, hi, I'm Carmen Smith. I'm director of public. I mean, nobody cares. So you just gotta. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You oh yeah, be yeah, on, yeah. And you gotta be on, and so I always love that. That's, that's excellent. Who else? Yes, Yvonne uh, Alzuro. Can you believe the weather we're having? Can you believe the weather we're having? Well, yeah, that's, that's kind of, yeah, it's great. Or, yeah, it's bad. <laughs> excellent. Thank you. Any, anyone else? Rob? Back to the good opening line. OK. You see that someone has a specific uh, tie on. It may have like a, a school, like they may have UVA or mm -hmm. you know, Penn. What year did you graduate from UVA? Or what year did you graduate from Tech? So you're kind of already assuming. Yeah. And that opens up the door to have a conversation about college or. That's good. That's good. And uh, Rob Youngblood will oftentimes wear his Virginia Union University tie as a conversation starter. I've seen him wear it at networking events, and it it opens people up. Good. Excellent. We are. Any anyone else? Good or, yes, sir? I guess whatever you could do to get on a personal level with somebody, if it's the beginning of the week, just ask them how their weekend was or what they, what they got into, or maybe it's Thursday, Friday, but it. Maybe a little deeper in the conversation. All right. Not an you brought it up, Scott, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you my second least favorite. I have, you brought it up. My least favorite is, how's it going? My second least favorite is on a Monday, how was your weekend? You know why, Ron Johnson, is because it's Monday. I'm in work mode. Don't bring me back to the weekend where I was happy. <laughs> Don't bring me back to Saturday when I was playing and having a great day. And now, you know. Too short. Yeah. That's See, that, 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 that's just, that's too, right. it's too short. End of conversation. Don't ask them how their weekend was. Maybe a little bit more creative. But anyway, OK, moving right along. We are just about done. <gasps> pictures with a story. Now it's story time. So sit back. This is story time. <laughs> There's a story behind each of these pictures that will help you in your networking efforts. Let's start with the right on the left. See that one on the left with that gentleman with the white hair. That gentleman is Ron Fink. Some of you may know Ron Fink. He's right in Richmond. Get yourself a business coach. A business coach. Somebody who, like I have an energy coach, Ron Johnson, but a business coach is somebody who can be really open and honest with you, who may see you at an event, observe what you do, and may have some input. Or you may have a question about a business. Someone who's been in the industry, maybe older than you. He's a couple of years <laughs> older than me. But he is my business coach. And if I'm really stuck, if I sales aren't good and I just need to have an attitude adjustment from a business perspective, I call Ron Fink. He's right here in Richmond. And he's always available. Get a business coach. On the top, there I am on the phone. It's not so much the phone, it's the shirt. The logo. If you can, wear clothing that has logo on it, like Tom Bandy. Not to pick on Tom, but I like picking on Tom. He's my business, one of my business partners. Bandy works right there on his logo. If you can, like today, I don't, I don't have my Cobb shirt on. I just didn't. But Advertise your brand. If you can wear a shirt, like my friend Holcomb back here has his logo on his shirt. Who else do? Who else does have a logo? Put a hand up if you have a logo. Right back there. Who else has a logo? Uh, Yvonne yeah. Alzer with Richmond yeah. Corporate Video has a logo. So that is a way that it can help you at, at events because people look at the logo. They want to know about their business. Right here on the bottom. What in the world is that? Well, that's kind of a little bit old, but that's still a trade show. Trade shows are a great place to network. Who goes to trade shows and represents your company? Yeah. Some people dread the trade show. You know, I have to stand there for two hours. I have a shift. Don't look at it that way. Change your attitude about that. It's not a dreadful thing. I have gotten more business from trade shows because people walk up and you get to use some of the things that we're talking about today, Stuart, and it creates conversation. They want your card, you get their card. We get a stack of cards and it builds sales. Trade shows are very good if you can get involved in them. 
Number four, what in the world am I doing on that one? <laughs> well, as my energy coach knows, you have to find a way to refresh yourself. You cannot network three to six events every week and burn the candle at both ends and be nothing for your family, nothing for your kids. I, on the weekends, tell you some of my secrets, that's a lot of what I do. I rest, I rejuvenate, I play, I don't do a lot of business, I don't talk to a lot of people on the weekends purposely because you've got to rejuvenate yourself. You've got to find time to just breathe and just don't talk to anybody, don't be around. Go out in nature, go to the mountains, it's fall, take a drive by yourself and just rejuvenate. Find an hour or two to do that and then you'll be ready the next day to get back in the game. That is one of my big secrets there. We are right at the end now. That wasn't so long. So now it's your turn. It's, uh, it's only about, gosh, 12.45, so we have had time. What questions do you have for me? Ask any question you like, Tom. Well, this isn't really for you, for your energy coach. Is that, okay. Is that, is that a left? So, so what's it like to be an energy coach for Peter? I'm, I'm thinking that's kind of like being a, that's, that's kind of like being a wind coach for a hurricane. <laughs> That's, that's, that's a good one. You don't, you don't have to answer that question right now. But anyway, what other questions do you have? Anything at all from what you've heard? Yes, Adam. Curious about your approach to sort of managing that work-life balance, and you know, you mentioned earlier about you know having a family and kids and all that, but still managing to get to three, six hours. Yeah. If you have little kids, if you are have little kids and they're in baseball and they're in sports, whatever, or dance, networking three to six events a week is going to be really hard for you. I did not do it when my kids were young. I did not do it because I was the dad who was there for the kids. I went to the baseball games. I went to the basketball games. I networked, but it wasn't three to six a week. The three to six is for those of you who don't have children or those of you who are a little bit older that your kids have grown and they're independent on their own. So family first, you can still fit one event a day. I mean, you, it's possible to do one and still be there for your family. Just pick the ones that are in the morning. Um, you can drop the kids off there and they're on the bus. You can still get there to the one or in the evening maybe your significant other can take care of them while you're there at the event from maybe 5.30 till 6.30. Even an hour at a networking event, you can get so much done in an hour and then go home, have dinner with your significant, play with the kids and be there. What else? Bob, the hands are flying now. Do you find, this, is, this might be a, a dangerous question, do you find one particular networking group more effective than the rest? Hmm. Well, for me personally, um, I don't have one particular one that is the most effective. For me, I, my company is in Henrico County. I live in Henrico County. Okay, so for me, anything to do with Henrico County is probably going to be really good for me, and I do focus a little bit more on those because of the geographic and the connection I have with the county. But here in Hanover, I've a lot of customers in the park, um, Chesterfield County, a lot of customers. So that's, that's about as close as I get to a favorite one. What else? I saw some other. Yes, David. Uh, I was just, just a tip we go to our company, uh, our administrative assistants, each Monday. Just go to, in case you missed it or unsubscribe the paper, don't see it. They have the Metro Business section has all Good. the events for the week, right? Good. And I'm sure they have it if you go online, probably see it for months in advance. But we just do it to remind ourselves that there might be just an organization we've never been to before. But one we have, and we just haven't been in a long time. Each Monday, take a quick look at it. It might be something next Thursday. You just go to lunch, you know, I close my lunch appointment. If it's no longer happening, they go to that instead. Yeah, so excellent. <clears throat> Who knows about that Metro Business section? Let me see your hand in the air if you know about the Metro Business section of the paper. Good. I thank you for that, David. Could I subscribe to the physical newspaper and have for 24 years, seven days a week. The reason I spend $60 a quarter, I know it's an investment, but it's an investment, is because that newspaper 
is the physicalness of it is just amazing. You can cut out articles. You can give it to people as a gift. You can laminate the articles. My, my secret networking tips I'll tell you about later. The paper's good. What else? Carmen. Can I add to what is David, right? Yes, David. Um, when you were talking about that, when you're networking with people, I've noticed if I ask what other groups or organizations do you normally visit or you know, what are you involved in, and most of the time the conversation is going awesome, right? So they're always like, why don't you come and join me because I'll be there on Wednesday at 8.30. I'm like, perfect. So you can kind of find out you know, more of the groups that way too. That's, that's excellent. Good. Who else? Yes, Rob. What is your follow-up uh, strategy once you've attended these three to six networking events you have met these folks? What do you do after that? Yeah. If I collect a business card, um, which I oftentimes do, uh, oftentimes do, have a CRM, you know, customer relationship management database that you work with at your company because I plug it into that. And I, if I want to do business with them, want to schedule an appointment, I'll actually call them up the day after. Don't wait more than about two days because they'll forget about you. But the day after, I'll call and say, you know, Scott, it was great seeing you at the event. I appreciate learning about your company. I'd like to get, you know, I'd like to get, get together and learn more about your company and share about ours over coffee. Great. Follow up the day after. You got yes. to share one secret on how much time you spend with each person. Oh, Peter you're Larson taking secret. away my other. That's part two, <laughs> but I'll just tease you a little bit. Um, this, it's the two-minute rule, not rule, two-minute guide, two to three minutes. When I'm at a networking event, um, I usually don't spend more than about two or three minutes with any individual person unless it's a really great business conversation. I'll continue because I want to meet Stuart. I want to get his card. I want to learn about his business. Maybe just share a little bit about mine. Really appreciate it. It's been great work. And there are strategies to exit. I can teach you another time how to exit a conversation without Stuart getting mad or even knowing what I did. But two, two or three minutes. Next, other questions? It's got to be some, I saw a few more hands. Yes. Maybe this is off topic, but how do you feel about um, social media networking? <laughs> I love social media. Maybe some of you saw this very event pr being promoted on social media. Put a hand up if you saw this event being promoted. Look at all that. Social media is very, very powerful, and it's a great way to connect with people. Use it. What I use, number one is LinkedIn. LinkedIn is the most important thing because you're going to connect with people on a business level through LinkedIn. Facebook is very good. I'm careful about Facebook because it's a lot of the fun side of me that I, is my brand. Everybody has a different brand on different social media. I do. My Facebook brand is more of the fun, um, all the extracurricular fun things that I do. And, and business is part of that. So I incorporated this event onto Facebook, did an invite, and a lot of you all responded to my invite. Great. Twitter. Who uses Twitter? One, two, three, two, three, four. Twitter is not the boring thing where you're just tweeting, I'm getting ready to go outside now, it's sunny. <laughs> Let the little teenagers do that. We are adults. What I use Twitter for is I use it for business. And I'm going to be teaching at some other groups um, soon on how to use Twitter for business because there's a way to use Twitter and it works. So I know how to use that for business. And um, Instagram, Instagram, you all know about that. Put a picture up of an event that you were at. I do that. Um, it's fun. Uh, one thing I use Instagram for, picking on Holcomb over here, is um, Holcomb and I serve on the board of directors for the BMW Car Club, the, the Blue Ridge chapter of BMW Car Club of America. And he and I serve. I'll take a picture of when we have a social, put that on Instagram. That builds awareness of the club. What other questions? Peter, what do you think of individuals who, after a networking event, reach out to you and friend request you on Facebook? Oh. Um, I don't have a goal in life to have a thousand <laughs> Facebook friends. I don't have, that's, that's not my goal. How do you feel about that? How do I? <laughs> I hate it. I hate it. Yeah. It's a personal LinkedIn business. Right? Uh, yeah, and that's, uh, yeah, I, I don't right. really have, I have like 150 Facebook friends and 1,100 LinkedIn connections, so that's my priority. Who else? Hmm? A few more. Anybody else? Questions? Something you've always wanted to know? Okay. All right. Well, Bob, I think that that would conclude it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
We've just heard from Peter Lawson, which is, who is Richmond's greatest connector. I'm very excited about the opportunity to come out. As a fellow connector, I learned a tremendous amount of information on how to network, what to say, where to go, and I'm walking away more empowered than I was before I came in. If you ever have an opportunity to, to come in and listen to Peter Lawson, take the opportunity, meet with him, and use the knowledge that he gives you to empower others and to increase your sales. Go, Peter.